Complex animation tends to take a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a damn good rig. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this amazing setup and animate anything in seconds. Janet! So this rig that we're going to make is comprised of only two objects, and it gives you such a massive array of motion and movement for simple characters like Smeef here. Let's now recreate this rig, and I'm going to break it down into five easy steps. Honestly surprised that not a lot of people know what a lattice is and the power that it holds. Essentially it's a bounding box that proportionally deforms any object inside of it. Let's add this into our scene and I'm going to shape it to encapsulate Smeef. If anything is protruding like the ears, you could start to see some funky things happen. So make sure your object is fully enclosed. Right, now that Smeef is in prison, we need to add a modifier to get this whole thing working. So select your character, come down to the wrench, add modifier, and we're going to add the lattice under the deform section. Change the object to lattice and straight away, you can see nothing's happened. To first use the lattice, we need to understand how it works. So with the lattice selected, down here in the object properties, we have these UVW resolution sliders. This essentially tells Blender how much resolution the lattice should have. The more we add, the more points the lattice has to work with, and the more deformation we can apply to Smeef. To actually see the lattice in action, all we need to do is jump into edit mode, select some of the vertices and start moving them. You can see immediately we have Smeef deforming relative to the points selected. But this is pretty unintuitive. We're having to jump back and forth between edit mode and move singular vertices. It's just not viable. This is because the lattice alone is kind of difficult to utilize. And this is where the power of the armature comes in. One hot and ready pizza, $5. This is where things get very interesting, and it's what unleashes the power of this rig. I'm going to add an armature here and position this at the bottom of the lattice. If you find it hard to see the bone, you can jump down to the object data properties, viewport display, and change this to show in front. Now in edit mode, I'll select the top of the bone, move it up to the top of the lattice and we have the beginnings of our rig. For the bone to actually deform the lattice, we need to first parent the lattice to the bone. So I'll select the lattice, then the bone, and hit Control p and select Armature Deform. What this has done is allowed the lattice to follow the bone's movement. However, if we jump into Pose Mode, it hasn't assigned weights to the lattice, because it isn't technically a mesh. In traditional rigging, each bone has an assigned weight to it, which allows the bone to push and pull the geometry. For our rig here with the lattice, we need to circumvent this weighting issue. And to do that, we're going to utilize vertex groups. So with the lattice selected, come down to the data properties and you'll see we have vertex groups here. I'm gonna click this plus button and before we do anything else, we need to ensure that this vertex group has the exact same name as the bone. This bone here is literally called bone. So I'll rename my vertex group accordingly. Now let's jump into edit mode and assign the weights. Essentially, we're going to press A to select all of the vertices and then click this assign button with the weight value set to one. Now the bone will have full weight over the lattice and whatever the bone does, the lattice is going to follow. <laughs> Now that we have all that complex stuff out the way, we're going to alter our current bone setup to start implementing some really cool squash and stretch effects. With your bone selected, we're gonna come down here to the object properties and transform the viewport display from octahedral to bendy bone. So now let's jump into the bone properties menu and in the bendy bones drop down, I'll increase the segments here to something like 15. And now you can see with these sliders here, I've basically made a spline that will squash and stretch Smeef in the bounds of the lattice. This is great, but we don't want to use these sliders. We want to make a smart controller that allows us to do this all on the fly. So let's make that. First, I'll hop into edit mode and extrude the top of the bone upwards. This is now a connected bone meaning any other bone that's connected to it is going to follow what this bone does. In our case, the main bendy bone here. 
So we've got this top bone now, but we want to make an alternate one at the bottom of the rig to act as a sort of anchor or base controller. So in edit mode, hit Ctrl D to duplicate this, and I'll push it straight down to the bottom of the rig. Now let's select the main bone in the middle here, shift select the bottom bone, hit Ctrl P and parent this as a connected bone. Now we have this bottom bone as the base controller and the top bone for everything else. But we can make this even more powerful by implementing the final step. This is the part that brings it all together and really brings out the power of the rig. All right, so in edit mode, we're going to duplicate this top bone and unparent it. So press Alt P and hit that clear parent button. Now it's kind of hard to see this bone that we've made. So what I'll do is visually scale this by pressing Control Alt S. So now we're going to know when we have the main controller bone selected. And while we're here, we may as well rename this. So hit F2 and call it something cute, whatever you want. Finally, we can start adding bone constraints. And this sounds exactly as it is. It's going to constrain particular bones to whatever our main controller is doing. So in pose mode, come down here to the bone constraints and I'm going to select the top bone. So not the controller bone, but the top bone. Now let's add a bone constraint and we're going to add the copy transforms. The target will be the armature and the bone will be the control bone. Instantly we have the controller working with rotations, but as soon as I try to move this, nothing happens. That's because we need to have the main bendy bone in the middle here to stretch to the controller bone. So select the main bendy bone and as the name suggests, we're going to add the stretch to constraint. Again, target is the armature and the bone is the control bone. With all of these steps done, we now have an insanely powerful rig. And with this knowledge, you can now create easy, fast animation in seconds. Goodbye.